Hi there. Whether you are applying to a loan or you are a lender, at some point of your life, you will be part of a credit scoring process. Join me on this video to understand how artificial intelligence is used to build credit scoring models. Hi there, I'm Kevin Fernandez, your advisor, and welcome to another AI shot. In this one, we'll talk about credit scoring models, right? This classical use case in AI that read on the books of news, etc. And the most traditional way of credit scoring is basically when you go to a bank, you ask for a loan for, for example, your dream house or to start a new business, and then they go inside to, into a kind of black box model process that you don't know what is going on out there and inside there. And they came out with a proposal saying you know, whether or not they approve the loan and their interest rates, etc. And that's the most classical way of credit scoring. But nowadays, with the advance of digitalization, with the advance of uh, with the progress of these, with the rise of these new startups, you now have like every sort of credit scoring on fintechs, for example, with buy now pay letters, with uh, peer to peer lending. You have a lot of ways of applying credit scoring. For example, even if you are a B2B business, for example, you can benefit from credit scoring because you want to know what is the capacity of your customer of paying this project because you are kind of financing the development of the projects because you are you know, sending them the materials and then they will pay after 60, 90 days. So credit scoring is relevant whether or not you are on the fintech sector, okay? And you you should be aware of the, of the benefits or of the needs or how to apply, how these kind of models are built. Anyway, if you're interested in credit scoring, I will leave a link below with a bonus content with our AI use case canvas if the uh, following, yeah, fulfilling the, the, the credit scoring strategy. Okay, so let's start with a credit scoring model. How How is a credit scoring model? Credit scoring model is basically a machine learning model that has three components. Okay, one is the borrower, okay? The one asking for money. Then we have the second part, which is the lender context, okay? This is the context of the people, of the person giving the money, of the institution giving the money. Then, of course, we have the one, okay? These are the three inputs of any credit scoring model. And the output is the credit score, okay? And the credit score is often a KPI, or a number that is correlated with a KPI that these uh, institutions care about, okay? The most common way to come up, the most common KPI to predict is uh, the default or not, okay? Whether or not the customer will pay, okay? And this, I will call it uh, default or not. It's like a binary indicator, whether or not this customer will pay the loan in full, okay? But there are other KPIs you can track and depending on what is your business model, maybe you are okay with having um, some levels of default as long as you get value out of them, for example. What is the customer lifetime value? For example, if I give him $100, Maybe they won't fulfill the payment, but they will pay enough in the meantime, including the interest and the and and the main. Okay, um, so maybe you were expecting them to pay 140, but they pay 120. Or, for example, maybe they do pay it always on time, but you want to you know to get higher interest. You don't want them to pay before the the maturity of of the loan. Okay, and so you you want maybe. Not predicting default, but other more continuous indicators can be relevant for your business. You can also predict, for example, payment delays, etc. There are many KPIs you can try to predict, and depending on how you are uh, positioning your business, one or the other could be relevant, okay? Then let's go for the data that you will need, okay? Basically, you will need historical data describing the borrower, your, your conditions as a, as a lender and the law, the, the conditions, the characteristics of the law, okay? Of course, all of them tied with this KPI that we want to keep track. What are the most common features that people care about when they, about when they are describing, describing the borrower? Typically, demographics. Okay, for example, uh, salaries, uh, job position, uh, locations, etc., age, like all of the demographics of, of the borrower. And um, they also care about their financial records, okay? Financial records. On what they spend the money, like their statement, their bank statements, etc. So demographics and financial records are the two main sources of data for credit scoring models from the part of the world. 
Then we have the lender context, okay? And the lender context can be, for example, the current portfolio of the lender and the market conditions. Okay, so if we are in a recession and what are the current Eastern interest rates, if they are rising or not, like all of the conditions nowadays around the market, the, the average, you know, and interest rates when your competitors, all of these conditions are relevant when you are building a credit scoring model. And then, of course, the conditions of the loan itself. And basically here you have things like the value itself and the period. The one, so it's a short term, long, under long, how many installments, etc. And the interest rates is long, interest rates. And of course, you care about the loan to value. Okay. Like if they are giving something uh, as a guarantor of, of the payment. Okay. And what is the value of that, of that asset with respect to the loan? So these are the main sources of data. Information about the borrower, demographic and financial, information about yourself as an institution, uh, about the market as a context, and information about the law. And machine learning models then are built on historical data on how these, tr these three components affected the main KPI that you wanted to track. Once you have this card, you have to make some decisions, of course. Maybe you want to have a balanced portfolio so you are okay with approving some high risk laws as long as the amount of loans is limited. So approval or rejection can change over time depending on the conditions, depending on your portfolio, uh, etc. So these are the most common uh, data points. What is, in my point of view, what are the three main limitations of credit scoring models? The first limitation is that it's single-sided, okay? So it's basically you give the information to the bank, the bank introduces this information into a machine and the machine gives a response, okay? And that's why there is so much uh, work nowadays, explainable AI or human in the loop processes. So we can basically interact with the AI in, with the model to improve the condition. So I don't like credit scoring models that just say approve or reject. I like credit scoring models that say you will be approved for this amount with this interest rate because we believe this is the conditions where you will have the lowest default rate or where you will have the highest customer lifetime value without compromising your financial safety. These are the kind of models that I think are more relevant and the ones that we should um, look after, okay, as, as AI developers inside financial institutions. So models where we can interact with that give us suggestions and, and uh, adjusted, adjusted conditions on the loan component um, to maximize our KPI. Okay, and this is why basically scorecards are so common models because can inspect what's going on and you can give these suggestions but like if i increased your income by 100 then your score can change by this much so you can interact with these kind of models that is the main reason why scorecards are so relevant the other issue that i see with credit scoring nowadays is that they are offering uh, one shot models okay you get approval or rejection while shot and your conditions are adjusted at that point unless you negotiate it well, negotiate it okay I believe that we should move towards more continuous credit scoring where your conditions can be adjusted over time to facilitate payment, to, to increase customer lifetime value if you are from the financial side of, of this problem. But instead of just having a one-shot approval or rejection, if we could you know, adjust conditions over time automatically or you know, with some feedback in the process, we could increase our values and national institutions uh, while keeping a safe environment uh, for our clients. And the third issue is fairness. Okay, and this is a major issue in the industry, an issue that is being regulated, an issue that a lot of people is talking about. On this book, uh, Weapons of Math Destruction, and the author talks about of this way of machine learning being a way of automating uh, biases or, uh, or uh, maximizing biases and fairness. And of course, you know, some people say, well, but I, I don't care about fairness or about uh, social inclusion, etc. I am a business and I have to survive. And I in general agree with your statement. I think that makes sense. But remember that having a bias, models, a bias model is not only affecting social aspects of your community, but it's also affecting your business itself because having a bias model works in the two ways. So if you are rejecting a, a, a loan to someone that should have access to it, you are losing opportunity from a client that could give you good value 
if you're approving a loan for someone that shouldn't have it, and just because you are bad, you're not always biased, then you're losing money. So fairness is not just a social issue, it's also a sustainable financial issue for you as a company. So let me tell you how to do proper credit scoring on the face of fairness by uh, having short-term feedback loops, okay? What does this mean? Let's say this is your, your credit score main, okay? This is your credit score. And let's say people distribute something like this, okay? In general, you will only approve loans on this area, okay? <clears throat> you will only approve a, a, you will only approve requests above a certain credit score. And this in general, as the author here suggests, maximizes certain historical biases, etc. So the way to having a good feedback loops is by also approving certain loans across the spectrum. And you will say, Kellen, why, do, why will I want to approve a lot on a very low credit score a client or prospect? Because you also need to learn from those cases so your model keeps improving over time and maybe discovers that this credit score here was, was low because of some bias on the data and not because this client was actually bad, okay? Of course, you need to do this in a very controlled manner if you don't want to be extremely fair from day Y and compromise the sustainability of your, of your model. You want to, let's say, just putting here some numbers, maybe 95% of your runs, 99% of your runs come from the actual good segment where you still have proven and a profitable business, but still keep a 1% learning uh, learning population where your model can start mitigating and removing these sources of biases. And that's the best way to build credit score models that are not only profitable now, but 10, 20, 30 years from now. Okay, I hope you like this video. Remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Hope to see you soon. Bye bye.